cave he went from, and now he could bear it no longer. He wanted to see his triumph in the eyes of his Eurydice. He wanted to see her love and his cleverness. He wanted it so much. He wanted to see his triumph written in Cornwall, the goddess's face. Surely it would be all right. He moved his head just a moment and flipped his eyes behind them. And for a moment he saw them, frozen in time, frozen in memory. The great shadow of Kor, and standing next to her, bright, his bright beloved, his Eurydice. And her face, he could never decide in after days what her face was. Whether it was a look, the eyes were looking in love, but the mouth was open. Was it horror, laughter, sudden shock, or perhaps blind acceptance? And then she was gone. And with her was gone the smell of roses, olives, and myrtle. Only the myrtle outside the cave smelled now. And he went back into the worlds of light. And it was said from that day, Orpheus dwelt once more with men. And that his Eurydice lived in this alone. And the songs he made of her. Songs, perhaps, 